It's just a wonderful woods to know that it's available to ski in at any time. It's an incredible piece of property that is still pretty wild. You ski for a few minutes and you feel like you're out there. I've been coming up here on and off for years, so I just come. I don't think about it, really. Probably skiing started back here in the 1920s. People want to continue to keep it that special place it really is. The Bolton backcountry has a rich history and took the work of many people to realize what it is today. The beginning of this legacy starts with Ed Bryant, a forester born in 1883. After serving in World War I, Bryant returned to Bolton and purchased 4,400 acres for $24,000 in 1922. And his idea was to actually build a ski area up here. So he was one of the founders of skiing in Vermont. Nordic skiing or downhill skiing it was one of the same at that time. It was leather strap bindings at that time. Bryant was a ski advocate. He cut trails including Snow Hole, North Slope, and Heavenly Highway in the 20s and encouraged friends and locals to ski the area. He had these three cabins that people could stay in as they hiked up because there was no access road up here. And we would get the key from uh, Ed Bryant, who lived at the bottom of the mountain. We used to hike up the logging road, and the logging road went all the way up to, to, uh, to Bryant's camp. So we'd ski all the way up to Bryant's camp. I think we went up the Heavenly Highway about once or twice in all those years because it was so tiring getting that far up the road, so it was a lot of work, but skiing was good. Bryant died in the early 1950s, and with the stipulation to leave the spruce, he sold it to Griffin Lumber Company in Jonesville. The land was used primarily for logging until 1966, when owner Roland Delorier began development of Bolton Valley Resort. There really wasn't many Nordic centers when this was started. I mean, my brother-in-law, Bob Stone, was a UVM ski coach. They had the idea of coming up here and building a Nordic center, and he really started it. Gardner went down and, and worked there when Bob left and really expanded it. So I met Gardner in the probably 1982, 83 skiing up here. And you know, it was the old Nordic center, which is now Mountain Ops. And so he ran the Nordic Center, and he ran it for probably 20, 25 years. And he wasn't like the high-level skier, but he just loved to ski, and he loved the land, and he liked people enjoying it. So he took what Mr. Bryant had done for trails, and he incredibly expanded them. And, you know, he'd get these young guys in there working in the Nordic Center. These guys love to ski, so they wanted to ski the trails. So he was like, let's build some more trails. So, you know, it was private land back then, so it was Gardner's playground, you know, and it became our playground. In the 70s, I was working for the Regional Planning Commission and making maps in the way that you have a piece of mylar and a pen. Gardner needed maps to show the trails of the Nordic area. He had someone take just a topographic map and lay out the lines of where the trails probably are. And then I took them back to the regional planning office and would make those maps. So the earliest maps were those that came out of, <laughs> off my pen. And then we would gradually add additional ones. Gardner's Lane, for example, was a trail that he had suggested and it was cut, but it didn't have a name. And I credit myself for having said, well, let's call it Gardner's Lane. Gardner Lane finally had a trail name for him, which I thought was appropriate. And then eventually with that map that I had been making by hand and it had been reproduced and so on, someone went out with a GPS box on his head and walked the trails and came up with quite a different map. <laughs> Besides Gardner Lane's young trail crews, the trails were also maintained by a group of longtime Bolton skiers called the Old Goats. Membership varied, but some local constants included Gardner Lane, Clem and Sylvia Holden, Olga Verana, and Howard Bacon. It just evolved. I have no idea how we, how we started. We just sort of carried an axe with us. We like to do telemarks on the Telemark Hill, 
and only make one or two nice tracks down, and then everybody coming up the mountain could see what good skiers were there. So that was Clem's tele-show off. That, that was the place. Every once in a while, we'd fall and mess it all up. It was very nearby, and it was a wonderful place to come to be to by ourselves. There was the legendary Olga Verena, who, uh, for whom the Olga's Falls is name, and she said to me recently, she's 95, and, and she said it was the best time of her life when she was doing the trail clearing and making bridges and uh, cutting down trees and clipping, that that was the time of her life. And I agree, it was a wonderful time and Gardner was never without a project. We just finished one trail and he we got an idea, let's do something else. One year the downhill area was completely closed. Well, as far as we were concerned, Bolton was never closed because Gardner had a key. The town agreed to plow up and they plowed our little parking lot down for the cross country people. They did it on their own, thanks to Gardner's goodwill. Over the years, the area's popularity continued to grow. In February of 2011, though, it was announced that 11,000 acres of woods, glades, and trails would be sold to a local timber company, ending public use on the land. With an instant outpouring of support, locals formed the Friends of Bolton Nordic and Backcountry to protect the land and the public's access to it. You know, we just said, this can't happen. Could we get people on board to do this? And it happened. You know, we, we took a year to negotiate everything, another year to fundraise $1.85 million, and then another year to finalize contract. That was 2013 that we finalized everything, and uh, we haven't looked back. As Bolton celebrates its 50th anniversary, it's a fitting time to recognize both the work that has gone into conserving the backcountry, along with our excitement for the next adventure in these magical woods.